Hey, I'm Mike Brown. Hey, what's up? I'm Johanna Opisifa. Nice to meet you. How has the ride been on your first ever headlining North American tour? Well, we've, it's our first ever headline tour. We've been on tour as support for High on Fire about three or four years ago for six weeks. And as we were a support band, so this was the first headline tour. And it's been some awesome dates so far. It's not a very long tour. It's 14 dates altogether. We had no off days, so this was focused on the East Coast. What I can say about touring America is that makes it really uh, fun for us is that the audience is very enthusiastic. In Europe, you have very often people that are kind of like stone faced, too cool for school. Here, people are very outgoing. There's a lot of stuff coming back, which makes the sparks fly. We had really packed out venues and really good times. For those who are unfamiliar, can you talk a little bit more about your sound? I would say overall this first a heavy rock band that's kind of tipping their head towards the great bands of the 70s. We definitely have some new elements, especially very heavily on the first album. There's still some doom on this for two, which came out last summer. You find maybe some old school proto heavy metal elements as well. But basically it's hard rock. I've read that you're very spiritual and you have a thing with the number seven. Can you elaborate on that? That started very early as a teenager. When I was 16, I was like in the 90s, I worked at this cool bookstore. And at the same time as I discovered heavy metal when I was like 13, that's when my sympathy for the devil got to go <laughs> The number seven, as a teenager, I was a huge dancing fan. That's the the song where he sings 777 is my name and when I realized that my name is actually consisting of 777 letters Johanna Claudia Sedonis that's my name I discovered a few more coincidences with uh, well quite a few uh, with that number it's the number that you're connected with what have been some of your challenges challenges you know, any one bump in the road you feel like talking about, whether being a woman in rock. Well, I can definitely say that being a woman in general, not only in the music scene, uh, is a challenge itself. And I mean, it's a bit of a present issue, more so lately in the media and so on. But I can say growing, <laughs> growing up in the metal scene as a girl, I had to take quite a few things in. I think I'm pretty outspoken now and I won't take shit from anyone anymore and I'm surrounded by great people who are especially now living in Sweden I'm from Germany and Germany is pretty modern and, and equal and Sweden even more so but you still run into issues and I think any woman that I know in, in the scene especially ladies that sing in bands you have to encounter a lot of crap you do especially on the internet <laughs> How's the third album coming along? I heard you're planning to release something next year. Well, we started writing. We have uh, quite a few things there, mostly unfinished. We have one finished song that we will actually play tonight here in Brooklyn, playing that on tour because we thought it maybe cool to kind of break it in before we take it to the studio, opposed to usually doing it the other way around, you know, where you record it first and then, because we have a way of, Nick and I write the stuff and then it's like first, it's recorded in the studio and then we take it out on the road opposed to maybe other bands that jam first. We're breaking that in. Uh, we're planning on recording it throughout the year. Um, we are fortunate enough to have our own studio, which means we don't have to all record it in one bug. We can go bit by bit whenever we have time in between touring. Yes, the plan is to hopefully release it next spring. I heard Berlin is such a beautiful and creative city. What made you leave? I love. First and foremost, Nika has a small son and Nika can't move anywhere. So, But I also love Stockholm and everybody in the band is from Stockholm. It's also not very far from Berlin. It's a cheap flight for me to jump on a plane and go visit friends and family. But also, I've been really fed up with city life. So Nick and I, we live kind of out in the country, south of Stockholm. So we have like deers running through the garden and there's nobody there. And I love that because it's a really good balance to all the socializing on tour. You know, when you see all these people, that's awesome and great, but it's also nice to come home and see nobody and just have nature around. And I had this craving for 
nature all my life because I was born and raised in, in a big city in Berlin and in, I lived uh, in LA for three years and a little bit in London. I always long to be out. Being away from people and lost in the mountains sounds amazing right now. It is awesome and the thing is if we want to go out we can take a car or a taxi or whatever to the city. It's a little bit of a longer drive but it's good because it's a lot. We've been uh, very busy with the band and we are out a lot on the road. What are your thoughts on cruises such as the Kiss Cruise? How is that experience? Yeah, it's a bit obnoxious. <laughs> but it's, also, it's so surreal. It was a lot of fun. I, for us, it was kind of a no-brainer to, to go. I mean, it's Kiss after all. And Nick is a huge Kiss fan. And everybody in the band is a big Kiss fan. I mean, it got a bit torturous, but we had to play, play three shows. and. One show was up on the deck in the Bahamas and it was so fucking hot. And everybody was out in their bikinis, you know, in jacuzzis. And we had to, like, we were more or on stage, get up, lasting sun, our faces red as lobsters, and maybe having like a stroke. But it, it was awesome. It, it's a great opportunity. I hope we can this. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to say or add? I have to add one more thing about the Kiss Cruise. I think the coolest thing was that Martin or one of our two lead guitarists got to play ping pong with Ace Freely. That to have that on your belt is like the best thing ever. I just want to add that we will continue this tour later on this year. There's going to be a second part, second leg of the tour, uh, focusing on the West Coast, and that's going to be in summer. And we're looking very forward to that. Awesome. Emma Crowley, it was so great talking to you. Thank you. It was a pleasure speaking to you. Looking forward to hearing more about the new album. Until next time, I am M.I. Crowley, signing off.